Hello everyone, Rose here for a very brief introduction. Yes, you read the title of this video correctly. This is indeed a reading vlog for the Star Wars book called Thrawn by Timothy Zane. It is a sci-fi novel. That's really all I have to say. Uh, let's begin my journey of reading Thrawn. Star Wars screen swipe. <laughs> Guys, oh my god, I finally did it. After so long, ha, ah, Dracula, I have conquered him, it, it is done. I'm fine, I'm just so stoked. And now I can finally freaking move on. I don't know what it is, but I just, I didn't want to move on to any other book before I finished this and now I can. Dracula, you're done, go away. You were, I mean, you were great, but go away now. And now, yes, this is what I have been waiting for. So I'm moving from one villain to another because if y'all didn't know, this blue guy with some seriously red eyes, dude, you need to get some sleep. Um, yeah, he's a villain and I am super stoked about it. Let the wonderful reading begin. Woo! I'm finally taking this bad boy, Dracula, back to its rightful home, to the library, where it has not been in a really long time. All right, let's do this. multitasking so as I am I back up all of my projects I do it on two hard drives one big one and then usually a smaller one which I know is like some serious overkill so while I am doing that because I am seriously behind on backing up my stuff don't do that kids anyways okay so I am currently on page 86 of we love visuals on Thrawn and so far there are three point of views one is from Thrawn there is a cadet named Eli. Those have been the two main characters. And then on page 51, they've introduced a third character and her name is Arinda Price, which that's fine. I think that they've introduced a third character at this point. I'm not against it, but at this point in time in the book, I'm far more interested in the two characters that they've already set up, which is Thrawn and Eli, because I'm I'm interested to see where their particular relationship goes. And it's right now it's really hard to describe and define what Thrawn and Eli's relationship is. It's so I'll just say all encompassing their relationship. I want to know where that's going. So with this third character, my issue is <laughs> I don't really care for her character. It's clear that she at some point is going to come in contact with Thrawn and Eli, which is fine. But right now I'm just, I've got to wait and see if there is a grand point to in having any part of her story told from her point of view, or if the author could have done that through Thrawn and Eli. Does that make sense? Is there going to be a point of having three point of views or could the author, uh, Timothy Zane, could he have stuck with just telling the entire story from Thrawn and Eli's point of view? Yeah, actually there was uh, something else that I realized and I wanted to, wanted to point out. So Thrawn, Mr. Blue Man, he is from a race called the Chiss. Not sure how to pronounce that, but that's what he is and what he comes from. I swear, I'm pretty sure, I don't know how old his particular race is, but I think they were the ones that invented the phrase roll with the punches because, oh my God, at least based on Thrawn, he is just the epitome of chill and roll with the punches. Like there was a scene where he was attacked, like physically attacked. And then afterwards, nothing. He analyzed it, he's like, hmm. He figured out why it happened, who did what, and he decided how to proceed and how, how to deal with the people that attacked him. 
in a very just a calm cool collected manner and i'm like my dude how what when are you all just born like this what even it's amazing is what it is and as of yet in reading this he has not had a moment of not being chill essentially in comparison i am watching uh, star wars rebels and uh, he's been in a handful of episodes that i've seen so far in season three and there was one scene so far where he was not chill and he actually emoted he showed some type of visceral reaction it was over an artifact that the i think the species is called twi'lek something to do with an artifact from them and uh, yeah perhaps i might insert a clip there but that it was just he got angry over some i don't know imperial officer or something just kind of dismissing the artifact my point is in the show our blue boy has shown some emotion once. So far in the book, nuts. I can't wait to see what moves him, you know? We shall see. We should just destroy that piece of Twi'lek trash. <sighs> My apologies, Captain Slavin. I forgot not everyone is able to appreciate art as I do. Captain's Log. I need to do just about all of the reading today, most of the reading. Why? Uh, because just how long it takes me to generally edit things, and I've gotten to a point where I like to try and upload on Saturday and Sunday, so if I want to hit that mark, then I need to finish this at least by like halfway of tomorrow. Um. <laughs> So I can have time to script things and film and edit and yeah, you, you get the point. I am currently on page 144 and there are 427. So I've got more than half to read in about roughly a day and a half. Doable, but st it's still a lot <laughs> to read in that amount of time. At least it is for me. Bonk. had to pause because I've seen posts and such on like Tumblr and I've, I feel like I've seen videos on this as well. I've, I think I've mentioned this in a, in a previous like vlog video that Thrawn, he reminds me of a Vulcan. I think that's the term I'm looking for from Star Trek. And so the comparison that has been made between Star Trek and Star Wars is it seems in the world of Star Wars, there's still a lot of xenophobia for how incredibly diverse this universe seems to be whereas in star trek it's just accepted that accepted that there is diversity different species it's like hey that's cool oh there's someone with like two heads or something i don't really know again i'm not 100 percent familiar with star trek but the point is people seem to be far more accepting in the world of star trek than apparently they are in star wars and even though I don't know much about Star Trek, but I feel like I know that because that kind of world seems far more accepting of non-humans and even just amongst humans, people seem to be on far more even ground compared to just beings and humans in Star Wars. I would much prefer to live in the world of Star Trek than in Star Wars, especially since there is very obvious just xenophobia. <laughs> And well, I mean, there's obviously a classism very much just prevails in our own human world. That seems pretty prevalent in this as well. Oh boy, there's certainly flawed. There's cool stuff in Star Wars, but woof, gotta love the carryover from our world into this entirely fantastical and sci-fi world. Yay! <laughs> Lunch break.
cake. And this is the lunch of champions. Ham sandwich, chips, and mixed nuts, and some H2O. Yeah. And um, as I typically do when I have lunch, I am catching up on YouTube things. Currently, I am catching up with Cozy Afternoons and her 2020 reading goals. So, good times all around. So I am taking another break and this time it's to do my daily lesson from Duolingo. I'm learning German. I'm on my day 33 streak of learning German. Yep, I have a terrible habit <laughs> of leaving my lesson until the very end of the night, which, so I'm finally doing it at a reasonable freaking time. Go me. The child has a bee. Das Kind hat eine Biene. Eine, because it's die Biene. So it's feminine. Oh, right. Yes, the masculine, feminine, Nuta. <sighs> Just the gender situation with so many nouns and what have you in German. Why? Not cool. Oh my god. And the fact that they change form just again depending on certain factors and what have you which i'm still learning i'm yeah i can say like grammar wise is a challenge when it comes to german not my favorite not my favorite so it is the next day and i've been i well okay i have not been able to do much reading i've also been working on the vlog and yes i realize how flippin' scary that looks. It says, it's, what is that, like 46 minutes? Don't worry. I'm gonna be cutting out so much <laughs> of this Thrawn vlog. Hold on, I'm gonna turn the camera around. So I guess it turns out I, I'm a slow reader, I guess. And there's just absolutely no way that I'm going to finish Thrawn today. I think I still have close to 200 pages left. I don't know, okay, for instance, Cindy from Read With Cindy, she's multiple times read books that are 500 pages or more in a day. What kind of freaking voodoo magic is going on with that? I don't even, how do y'all do that? I can't do that. So the video is going to come out later than I really had hoped it would, but it is what it is. Got to do some more reading. Time for concluding thoughts. I will still try to keep this as spoiler-free as possible, so here we go. The entire story can really just be boiled down to following three characters and just their individual rise to power. The timeline of this book isn't 100% clear to me, but I'm pretty confident in saying that for sure it takes place over the span of four years at least, potentially up to six years, somewhere around there. Pacing. Let's go on to that. The, I think generally the pacing of this story is pretty consistent. It, you know, it starts out a little bit slow because at least for me, I didn't really start to feel the most interested <laughs> in this until about page 150 out of a 427 page book. It is what it is. When it comes to the writing, I would definitely say it is not bad, but there is definitely room for improvement. I think one of the biggest weaknesses of the writing and just the story in general is character development. I will get into the characters specifically in a little bit, but before I get there, I also want to state that I think not only is this book and specific story, but I think all other Star Wars books, I think they're specifically meant for Star Wars fans. I say this because <laughs> If you were just an average Joe that knew absolutely nothing about Star Wars, you would be super lost and confused in this story. The book does not take the time to build the world that is Star Wars, to establish the world of Star Wars. The story in the book, it assumes that you're already familiar with Star Wars, and I think that is a perfectly fine and fair thing to do. Even so, I think that Timothy Zane, he should have and could have added his own 
extra details to just fluff up, just to add to the world as a whole, especially to the characters and even, even just the smaller details, but no less insignificant details, like character descriptions. Allow me to elaborate. Okay, we are starting to get into the characters now. I couldn't tell you what Eli Vanto, a main character, looks like. Not a clue. The only thing that I know about him is he is human, he is a dude, and he is young. Groundbreaking. Arinda Price, another main character. I shit you not, <laughs> we were not given any physical descriptions of her until the last 30 or 40 pages of the book, and even then it was just her hair color and her eye color. Wanna guess how much we knew about her before that? Ah, she is human, she is a woman, and she's probably in her 30s. Okay, Thrawn, our main guy, our main squeeze. So he was described pretty early on as being blue-skinned, he has black hair, he has red glowing eyes, and he's generally humanoid in shape and being. I think this one, it, it's fine, that's passable, but, you know, there, there is the, 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 very simple fact that the readers already knew going into the book what he looks like because he's on the freaking cover of the book. In any case, kind of reiterating, but I do feel like not only could physical descriptions of characters been bolstered up, but just as well as the overall world building. Just add to the world of Star Wars. I, I Again, I already know that Star Wars is established, but you can still add to that. Does that make sense? Okay, let's, let's, move on. I do have one last small but kind of nitpicky thing dealing with the writing, and that was the overuse of the word wince. And to a slightly lesser degree, murmur. Not trying to be rude, but a thesaurus does exist. Please use it. Let's shift over to the characters <laughs> and character development. Ah, okay. From start to finish, I never felt like Eli was a fully fleshed out character. To me, he just kind of came across as more of an object, potentially a MacGuffin, definitely a pawn that is just being used to further along Thrawn's story and Thrawn's rise to power. And, eh, you know, you know in, in his own way, he is a pawn in that, but you get what I mean. He never really felt like he was an actual person in his own merit. Definitely not one with enough depth for me to really feel much of anything at all about him. <laughs> to me, he was just, he was never given the chance to be a person, an individual, which is really odd considering he is a main character and the story is partly told on and off from his perspective. So in the end, I just felt indifferent towards Eli Vanto. Sorry, my dude, but it just seems like you never really stood a chance from the very start. Moving on to a second main character, Thrawn. Now he is kind of a hard one to pin down. Yes, I do like his character. I was intrigued by him and thus I wanted to read his story. I feel like he was the most developed character. He was given the most depth, but I, I don't know. I just, I feel like there was still just a little something missing from him and for him. Okay things that we do know about Thrawn. We know that he is scarily proficient at all things military. Wow. I said it in my vlog section, but if you look up the word chill in the dictionary, Thrawn is just right there front and center, his picture. And Thrawn, he also gives Yoda a run for his money on just being like the living embodiment of Zen. You really have got a lid on it, haven't you? What's your secret? Mellow jazz, bongo drums, huge bag of weed? Now there is definitely more to Thrawn's character, but at the same time, I think I already said this, yeah, I felt like there was something missing. Mm. I think part of it is, for most of the time, while we're in Thrawn's perspective, it felt more so like we, the reader, we were just like a parrot sitting on, t on his shoulder and viewing his world from that way, from that perspective, rather than being truly inside his head and being able to see the world from Thrawn's point of view and understand just how he views things, his his thoughts on the world around him and characters that surround him, you know? I think that we just, we were not consistently truly in Thrawn's head throughout the story. I get that Thrawn is supposed to be like a mysterious character, but I don't know, I feel like there could have been a better balance struck if you follow me. 
All right, let's shift over to Arinda Price. This is like vaguely spoilery, I'm not sure. The main and only reason that she is a main character is because while Thrawn's character is proficient in military things, the Navy, that sort of section, his biggest weakness is understanding politics. And that's where Miss Price comes in. Just like Thrawn, the book follows Miss Price and her journey to power. In general, I am, I'm not against multiple POVs, but I think I generally prefer two point of views at maximum. So if a story is going to bring in more than that, this person needs to be interesting. Spoiler alert, I found Miss Price to be vaguely interesting, and it was more so the idea of her story, which was essentially a person who is working a kind of low middle grade job and then working their way into a position in the government and of power. Miss Price as a character, she was just kind of whatever to me. Like Eli, she lacked development. Not nearly to the extent as Eli, but she was still lacking. But moving on from her character and shifting over to side characters, most of them felt pretty one-dimensional. There were a couple, a few, that felt two-dimensional, so you know, upgrade. I would say that the two side characters that, at least for me, felt like they had the most potential is one of them was an imperial high-ranking officer named Yularen, I think that's how you pronounce it, and a smuggler slash sort of rebel called Night Swan. Going back to Eli and Thrawn, and I may have already touched this, touched on this in my vlog, so this may or may not be cut, but when it comes to their relationship, this got too long, so I'm going to shorten it. In the end, Thrawn and Eli's relationship didn't really change that much from start to finish. It took Eli about two to three years to no longer feel resentment towards Thrawn, but even after losing the resentment, how they interacted pretty much stayed the same. The end. So anyways, no great way to segue from this, but I think at this point you all may be asking, so did you even enjoy the story? Yes, I did. I mean that in all seriousness. Despite the flaws <laughs> that I pointed out, I still overall enjoyed this story. At this moment, I would feel comfortable giving this book a three-star rating. Perhaps at some point, if I give myself enough time to mull this over, I might bump it up to like a 3.5, but right now it's setting at a three. And for my ranking system, that's, that's still a positive. Three for me means I like it. And yes, if you're interested in reading about Thrawn, do so. Go ahead and read this book. <sighs> be free. Now, while I may not be the biggest fan of Timothy Zane's writing, I like the fact that it kind of felt as if he had a list of things that he, he needed to tick off to at include in the story. It just didn't feel like he really added much more than that if that if you follow me if that makes sense and also at this moment in time it's kind of hard for me to be able to say that i think timothy zane has a very distinctive writing style it's unclear to me right now even so <laughs> with that in mind i still do want to read the two other thrawn books that he's written up to this point so I think there probably are other details and what have you that I could get into about this book, but my gosh, this video is long enough. So if you stuck around, thank you so much. Y'all are the champions. Okay, I will be reading the, let's get the visual. Oh no, I'm sorry, Steve. Hold on, let's, there you go. It's okay, Steve. So is this in frame? Yeah, there we go. So there is the comic for Thrawn's story. And if I'm not mistaken, this is the same story as that, it's just in comic form. So at some point I will be able to compare the two and I guess perhaps decide if I prefer this shorter, more compact Thrawn story over the lengthy version. Cool, okay. Uh, uh, all right, that's it. <laughs> Until this time that I read that, that, that is all for freaking now. Thank you all very much for watching. I hope you are having a lovely day and I will see you in my next video. Bye. Okay, this is a little bit of extra. This is super random, but okay. I just think guys in general should grow out their hair more. I say this because, okay, so here, let me get this a little closer. Woohoo! 
So there is Thrawn with his hair cut. Obviously, he does that once he is with the uh, Empire. But before that, hold on, hold on. He had some amazing locks, and then he just cut it. What the fudge? Wait, hold on. I'm sorry. There we go. Yeah. Look at that. That is some seriously majestic hair. And then he just cut it all off. What a shame. 